the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Thank you. 
sing songs together in unison. Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless us. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bound down. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. 
Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved, grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It feels a little weird that Jesus begins this rant, you might say, in the presence of the crowd. He has just affirmed to the disciples of John the Baptist that John's ministry was valid and that what he was doing was to prepare the people for the arrival of the Messiah. Except that Jesus knows that as many people as were drawn to the desert to go and see John and to beg for forgiveness and a fresh start, there were others who were ready to cry out, that man is crazy, there's something wrong with him. Something terribly, terribly wrong. So Jesus begins to quote from a children's song, at the time. We played music and you wouldn't dance. We cried and wailed and you wouldn't be sad with us. It's a little bit like using Ring Around the Rosie right now. It takes on a slightly different meaning in the middle of a pandemic where half a million people have died. To sing about ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Jesus quotes from this children's song because he wants to point out that no matter what he does, no matter what they try, it seems that for some people there is no right way to share what God is up to. No right way. As a matter of fact, the uh, pericope pickers actually cut out a whole chunk of this passage. You may have noticed if you were counting verses that we skipped a bunch. Right? I'll talk about that in a second. But the first two things that Jesus talks about were the way that John, in his austere forsaking of everything, tried to help people understand what God was up to. Gave up everything, gave up every sign of power and pretension, went out to the wilderness, and simply offered people a muddy bath to start their lives over. All with the hope that they would be ready when Messiah came. And yet for many, what he did made no sense and wasn't worth paying attention to. Indeed, some even accused him of being possessed. So then when Jesus finally shows up and people are prepared for someone who his axe is ready to swing and chop down every bad tree, what does Jesus do? Well, he goes to dinner. This must have been a shock for some of the people who were getting ready. Jesus goes to dinner. Jesus gathers. Jesus laughs. Jesus sings. He gathers with strangers and familiar people, people far and wide. He'll go to dinner at anybody's house. I mean, maybe he just didn't have a lot of food in his cupboard. He enjoyed being invited over. That's a possibility. I had a friend like that. He fed himself one night a week, and he got invited the other six. But Jesus went to dinner. Jesus celebrated what God was doing through works of joy, through works of welcome, through connection, and through the incredible bonding that takes place at the dinner table. Now, did people receive this celebratory mood as a welcome change from the grim things that John had promised? No. No, they didn't. They looked at Jesus and said, oh man, look at this, look at this party animal. He can't possibly be the real thing. This can't possibly be what God is up to. So asceticism and forsaking all things for the sake of God's kingdom, no good. 
celebration and joyful welcome, gathering all in, clinking glasses at the table, sharing great stories, wondering deeply about each other's lives, no good. In the middle section, Jesus even talks about miracles, because we like to think that, of course, if people witness miracles and deeds of power, has anyone here actually seen a miracle? Who here has seen a miracle? Yeah? Oh my goodness. Three month old grandson. Yeah, that's a miracle right there. Anyone else seen a miracle? Jesus lets people know that if the folks in the cities and the towns near him had seen the kind of miracles and works of power that they had seen, they should be rejoicing. They should be celebrating that God is present and God is at work. And instead, Jesus got poor reception in the hometown crowd. Not a lot of turnout. Not a really great welcome for him. And yet, in all these things, Jesus reminds people that this is what he's here to do to gather the least, the last, and the lost around one joyful table of celebration so that all who have been misplaced, left out, and pushed out might be regathered at God's feast, might know that they are part of that welcome. You know, I think the critique that Jesus has for that generation can land on us just as easily. We say, do it the right way. Seek justice the right way. Seek liberation the right way. Well, just last night, a group of people were dancing. Dancing and celebrating on a closed street. And someone chose to drive their car through the barrier and then drive through the dancers and kill someone. We say do it the right way, but do we mean it? Do we mean it? Jesus knew what it was to try and celebrate his way into God's new reality and to have some welcome this celebration and have others be horrified, even by the celebrating, even by the joy, the laughter, and the dancing. Probably even the singing. God, I miss singing. Anybody else here really miss singing? Oh my goodness. Right? I will I will probably dance in the aisle when we have a vaccine and we can all sing together. But Jesus reminds people exactly what it is that he's trying to do with those who have felt so lost and so abandoned. He invites them in to take on his yoke. Has anyone ever seen oxen plowing a field right yeah it's quite a feat to it, it's quite a feat to get these large animals to plow a field and what's more you can't have just one of them do it it takes a team the purpose of a yoke of course is to connect the two animals and frequently farmers would connect a junior ox to a senior ox because the senior ox knew how to plow straight, beautiful lines that didn't destroy the farm and didn't destroy the field. And the junior ox wanted to wander off that way and go eat some clover, right? We've all been, we've had those days, right? Like, oh, this is hard. I'm gonna go over here and do something fun now, right? But what would happen with that yoke is they'd be connected together. And the inexperienced would learn from the experience. The one who knew the way to walk, knew the way to go, knew the way to make that field ready for planting so that everyone could eat. That one would pull, the other would follow, and over time, they'd be able to do it without any struggle at all. And at that point, the yoke was merely a connection so that they could remain connected. Jesus offers this to those who have felt like they have no place in God's kingdom. To share his yoke, 
to share in the authority and wisdom and joy that he has in God. To know how to plow a good field, how to stay on track, how to avoid the distractions, but most importantly, how to make sure that that field is ready for the care of the whole community. And Jesus said that these burdens, this yoke, it's easy. It's like all around him he witnessed the judgment of religious people tearing his neighbors down and tearing them to pieces. And here he offered them a way to approach the wisdom of God and to move forth, guided by the ultimate wisdom in the universe. So for this today we say, thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together with the church around the world, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant space. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and the land from abuse and pollution. Free us from the apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the nation, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood. 
guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders our relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, for all who are sick still and need your loving care. For those who are addicted and homeless, help us to see your face in them and show us ways to bring comfort and aid and aid. For the victims of the coronavirus, those who have passed, those struggling to stay alive, and the families who have this terrible illness and cut. We ask that you enlighten those who show indifference and hold little concern for the welfare of others during this pandemic. We pray for all who are tired, feeling despair, or oppressed, or are sick, especially Judy, Gary Gibbs, Fred Goebel, Fran, Lori Helm, Ed and Betty McCormick, Dave Allaire, and those we say aloud or hold in our hearts. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. We pray for this congregation. Bless the pastor, worship leaders, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers and little lamb's teachers and students. Especially Miss Colleen and the toddlers, Beatrice, Jessica, Benjamin, Rowan, Knox, Maddie, Thomas, Tyson, and Isabel. We pray for our church administrators and those who maintain the building. And for our church families, this month we pray for the Mazzarellos, the McGarrys, Carol McQuaid, the Millers, the Mortisons, and the Moyers. Lord, we ask that you shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for those who cannot be here with us today, including the homebound, Billy Lane, Kathy Lindell, Alex Pritchard, Ron Painter, Elizabeth Zawatowski, and Carol LaRosa. And for those who are in the military, including Boston Burrell, George Hill, Chris Jacob, Nathan and Michelle Sapowski, Kyle McCure, Michael Moyer, Jane Moyer, Jacob Theo, Zachary Schaefer, and Nika Garland. Thank you for those who return home safely. Show us how to provide them care and understand. Comfort those who grieve and gather around you and pray for your God. Hear us, O God. We offer you prayers of thanksgiving for our many blessings. Hear us, O God. Finally, give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these blessed ads. Receive these prayers of God and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of peace with one another from a distance. Peace. Peace. <laughs> and now with great joy we offer ourselves, our lives, and all we have to God in an act of offering and thanksgiving.
now together let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feet. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Are there any important announcements that need to be shared for the good of our community? I have no idea what you just said. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Did you want me to make an announcement about Jonathan? Okay, thank you. Got it. Um, so I know last week we announced that there was going to be a memorial here in the outdoor chapel for John McGarry. Uh, unfortunately, due to some circumstances with family travel, that's needed to be uh, uh, suspended as an in-person activity. Uh, the family is going to be working on putting together a virtual memorial with children, grandchildren, uh, lots of different family members doing readings, songs, lessons, and so all of that will be hopefully assembled and put together, and we'll be sharing that the same week that we would have um, held the service here. Uh, so please hold the whole family in your prayer, because this is hard to have to try to work around all these moving parts of traveling from different states and uh, the varying conditions in all the different parts of the country. Uh, and the burial will still be taking place, is that true? In August at Camp Calumet uh, in their memorial garden. So please hold the family in prayer and uh, we will be sharing that worship service with everybody so that they can take the opportunity to celebrate John's life with them. Other important announcements? <laughs> Whose birthday is it? It's the oh beginning of the night. We have birthdays <laughs> to Clark, Jeffrey Bolt, Maureen Owen, Crystal Liebman, Eric Woodbury, Deborah Corliss, Sherry Hall, John Lazaro, Joan Earl, Wayne Pickup, Emily DiNardo, Michelle Lovesall, Betty Johnson, Brad Upsall, Robert McGarry, and Ryan Seiler. Well, happy birthday to everybody. I guess it was boring about nine months ago. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, any other announcements that we need to share? I just want to thank you, everybody, for your prayers. We uh, we did have to take uh, Grizzly Bear to the vet last Sunday and have him put down. Um, his uh, illness had progressed to the point where he couldn't stand anymore and he couldn't really live. So thank you very much for your prayers for that. And uh, we just kind of keep trucking. There are no other announcements. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all the people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.